Section 9.5, objective students will determine the relationships and properties of tangents. So let's talk about properties of tangents. A tangent line is to a circle is always perpendicular to the radius of the circle. So if we look down here, we have a tangent line right here. And if we have a radius, this is always going to make a 90 degree angle right there. Another property of tangents is that tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. So let's look at number two as an example. So I have a common external point, which is U, and I have a tangent line that goes here to E, and then I have a tangent line that goes UT. And the theorem states that those two segments are congruent. That's what that second theorem says. So let's practice this. Use, use the properties of circles, tangents, and triangles to find OA. If OA is a radius, what is the measure of OAB? Well, that's pretty easy. That one's just 90 degrees because OAB is this angle right here. Okay, number two. PU equals what and EU equals what? So let's look here. We're first... We're looking for this side, right there. And we're looking for EU, which is right here. Well, EU is easy because it's the same as TU. Okay, and then to find PU, I'm going to have to use this information that it tells me the radius is 6. So I know that PE is 6. And I know that PT is 6. So if I, because they're all this, they're all a radius. If one radius is six, they all have to be six. And if we look right here, I'll try to color it in a little bit darker. But we have a right triangle with twelve and six as a side, and PU as a side. We don't know, so we can say six squared plus twelve squared equals. We can call it PU squared. I don't know who picked that PU, but sounds good. All right, thirty-six plus 144 equals PU squared. So 36 plus 144 is 180 equals PU squared. So to find the length of PU, I would just take the square root of 180. So I have to square root both sides. And the square root of 180, if we're just going to do the decimal answer, it would be 13.4. So the length of PU is 13.4. Put that right here. And it doesn't give us any units, so we won't worry about writing that. And EU is 12. Number three, if RS is a tangent segment and OS is a radius, so RS is a tangent segment, OS is a radius, what is the measure of ROS? So our theorem up there said that this makes a 90 degree angle. So if this is 35 and this is 90, then if I add those two together, I get 125. And I can subtract that from 180. We can go 180 minus 125, and we get 155 degrees. Once again, the picture doesn't really... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put 155. What am I thinking here? 55 degrees. Help me do my math correctly. <laughs> so this would be 55 degrees. That looks a little bit more like it. Okay. If EF and GF are tangent segments, what is the measure of EGF? So I'm looking for this angle. Well, these two tangent segments meet at an exterior point right here which means that this length is congruent to this length. And if we remember, this makes an isosceles triangle, which means that this angle and this angle are the same. So I can call them x. I'll call them both x. So I have 64 plus 2x equals 180. So if I take 180 minus 64, I get 16. 116, I was going to say that wasn't right, 116, 
and then I divide 2 on both sides, and I get 58. So the measure of those two angles are 58. Okay, that was it for 9.5. Let's go to 10.1. Inscribed and circumcised circumscribed triangles and quadrilaterals. These are triangles drawn inside of a circle and a quadrilateral drawn inside a circle. Students will explore the properties of a triangle inscribed in a circle. So the first definition here, inscribed right triangle diameter theorem. The converse is also true, so we'll, we'll come back to this converse also true. If a triangle is inscribed in a circle such that one side of the triangle is a diameter, so if we look at this triangle right here, this side right here is a diameter, then the triangle is a right triangle. Let's explore why that's true. If we look at the arc that is intercepted here by angle CBA, it is 180 degrees. So if we remember the inscribed angle theorem, the angle directly across from it has to be half the size, so this would have to be 90. So that makes sense that if I have a di one of the sides of my triangle is a diameter, then the triangle has to be a right triangle. It wouldn't matter where B is on this circle. This, if it went here to here, it's going to make a 90 degree angle no matter where it's at. The converse is also true, means that if I have a right triangle inscribed in a circle, then the other side is the diameter. The other property says inscribed quadrilateral opposite angles theorem. If I have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, that means it's drawn inside a circle. All four of the vertices are on the circle. Then the opposite angles are supplementary. So angle E, this one, plus G, would equal 180 degrees, and D plus F would equal 180 degrees. Okay, so if I add those two together, they're going to equal 180. Same going this way. Draw a triangle inscribed in the circle through three points, through the three points. Then determine if the triangle is a right triangle. So I have A, B, C. I already went ahead and connected the lines. And I have to look at it and decide if it's a right triangle. But remember that it has to go through the diameter to be a right triangle. There's no other way to do it. So this would be no, because O is the center of my circle, and it does not go through O. B would be yes, because it goes through the center of the circle. So then it has to be a right triangle. Two. In the figure shown, triangle ABC is inscribed in circle D, and measure of angle A is 56. So this one right here is 56 degrees. What is the measure of angle C? Well, these all have to add up to be 180. So if I take 90 plus 56, that's this angle plus this one, 90 plus 56, I get 146. Angle C is going to be 180 minus 146. And that is 34. So the measure of angle C equals 34. In quadrilateral ABCD, measure of angle B is 101 degrees. Determine angle D. Well, this is opposite angle, so it's supplementary, which means they add up to 180. So I can take 101 plus angle D has to equal 180. So I can subtract 101 from both sides, and angle D equals 79 degrees. In the figure shown, number 4, quadrilateral F, G, H, J is inscribed in circle K. Notice how we always um, describe the circle as what the middle is. K is the middle point, so I call it circle K. The measure of angle F is 112, and angle G is 87. What are H and J? Okay, so H is supplementary with F. So if I have angle H plus 112, it has to equal 180. So angle H 
is going to be 180 minus 112, and that gives me 68 degrees. G and J have to be supplementary, so I can say angle J plus 87 equals 180. So angle J is going to be 180 minus 87, and I get 93 degrees. That's it for 9.5 to 10.1.